Okay, here's a, a good question um, where you have to calculate or draw a heating cooling curve and then calculate the total amount of energy required to increase the temperature 20 grams of ice from minus 20 to 120. So uh, you need to follow what happens with that ice. So uh, the ice is at minus 20. Um, so let's say that that's about here. And then it uh, heat is added. And so this is potential energy over here. P, potential energy. So heat is added. So the as you add energy to ice, it'll slowly increase in temperature. And it'll get to zero degrees Celsius, where then it'll convert into a liquid. So it changes from a solid to a liquid. So you can add more and more energy, but the energy is being used to convert the liquid from a solid form to a liquid form. Okay, once all of the ice is in liquid form, then the temperature will increase again, and it'll increase all the way till it gets to 100, at which point it starts converting into steam or into gas. Uh, and when you do that, all the energy that gets added doesn't um, give you a temperature change, it gives you a phase change. So this is where it would change from a liquid to a gas. Uh, gas. And then after, once all the liquid has been converted into gas, then you can increase the temperature of that gas again. And they want us to increase it all the way to 120. So when I look at this question, it looks like there's going to be five things I'm going to need to calculate. So I need to calculate how much energy uh, it takes to get this ice from minus 20 up to uh, zero. So that's the first thing I'm going to need to do. Uh, the second thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to, need, going to need to melt the ice. How much energy does it take to do that? Third thing, I'm going to need to get that water from zero up to 100. Um, okay. And then the fourth thing I need to do is convert the liquid gas, liquid water into gaseous water, into steam. That'll be step four. And then the last step will be to increase the temperature of that steam up to 120. So there's my five steps. Now, the first step, it's a temperature change. So it's a kinetic energy change. And uh, that would be, so this is a kinetic energy change. And any kinetic energy change, you always use mc delta t. So for step number one, uh, it's a kinetic energy change because it's temperature. And so I'm going to use this formula. The amount of energy it takes is equal to mc delta t. I just need the mass of something. I need to know the specific heat capacity and then the uh, change in temperature. Okay, so just plugging in my numbers, my mass of ice is 20. So 20.0 grams times by the specific heat capacity of ice. So this is ice. I think it's 2.01 uh, joules per gram degree Celsius. You might have to check on that multiplied by the change in temperature. Now I'm just going from minus 20 to zero, so that would be 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if I multiply all that together, you get 400 times two would about, be about 800. I'll just do the first couple and then you can do the others. So it's gonna be around 800. You can figure out exactly how much that is. 800 joules of energy to take it from minus 20 up to zero. Okay, kinetic energy change. Now I've got all the ice ready to melt. It's not melted yet. It's right at this point. So then step two comes in. And step two says I need to melt ice. Well, if I look at my data booklet, it'll tell me how much energy uh, is required to melt uh, a mole of ice. And anytime you have a potential energy change like that, you can use the NH formula. So heat or the amount of energy is the number of moles times by the molar heat of whatever you're doing. So it could be a molar heat of combustion or whatever. In this case, we want to know the molar heat of fusion of ice. How much energy does it take to melt one gram of ice? Not one gram, one mole of ice. Okay, now um, I think in your book, if you look for the molar heat of uh, fusion of ice, it's 6.01 uh, kilojoules per mole. 
That's how much it takes. But I need to know how many moles of ice I have. I know how many grams of ice I have, but I don't know how many moles. So maybe I should go over here and figure that out. Moles are equal to mass over molar mass. The mass is 20.0 grams. The molar mass of water is 18.02 grams. You get that from two hydrogens in water. Uh, 1.01 1 .01 each would be 2.02. .02. And then one oxygen, and that's 16. So if you add those together, it gives you the 18.02. So you divide that and you get one point something, 1.1 1 .1 whatever the number is. Uh, this is 18.02 grams per mole. So the grams cancel out and this will be moles. So that's the number I'm going to put right here, 1.1 1 .1 moles. Okay, times 6.01 .01, uh, kilojoules. Um, I'm just looking at this number I, that I did before there. Uh, 20 times 2 is 40, 40 times 20, yeah, that's 800, that's right. Um, anyway, so this 4.1, whoops, the 4.1, uh, or the 1.1, I'm putting in uh, right here in the formula for moles, and now I multiply that together, so it'll be 6 point something kilojoules, uh, and the moles cancel out, so just kilojoules. Okay, then away you go with step three. So step three, it's a kinetic energy change because it's a te there's a temperature change. So in step three, I'm going to be using uh, energy is equal to mc delta t. My mass of uh, this time, the, it won't be ice anymore, it'll be water, but I assume that it'll be the same mass. Specific heat capacity this time will be different, 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I'm going from zero up to 100. So there'll be a 100 degrees Celsius change. So those will cancel, the grams will cancel, and my answer will come out to joules. So multiplying that 20 times that would be about 80, and add a couple of zeros. So about 8,000, I think. I don't know, I'm just guessing on those numbers. Anyway, so you have to do all five of them, and then at the end you just add them up. The only thing you have to worry about when you add them up is that each of the formulas is coming out with a different unit. So this first one came out to joules. I probably should convert that to kilojoules. Uh, this one came out to kilojoules, so that's okay. This one came out to joules. I should convert that to about eight point whatever kilojoules. And then uh, at the end, it says how much energy required to do that. I would need that plus that, plus this one, plus whatever this one is, plus whatever that one is, and that'll be my total answer. Okay, I hope that uh, helps you out with that question. Now, in terms of drawing the heating cooling curve, um, uh, this would be, uh, you could write this uh, uh, progression in terms of just writing... Uh, uh, for the graph, putting the uh, grids on it, um, or the axis title. So this would be like a progression of what's happening. This would be a potential energy, or the amount of energy, uh, or not would be potential energy. This side over here will be temperature. Whoops. This, ah, this side will be temperature, and a title of the graph, something like um, heating... 20 grams of ice from minus 20 through to 120 degrees Celsius, something like that for a title. Just doing the graph properly, that's what you should do. Hopefully that gives you an idea of, of how to approach that question.